Mr. Cohn. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Every year, we agonize over passing a budget, trying to make a balance between how much services to provide and how much the taxpayers can afford. A budget that will spur economic growth and create jobs and propel our economy into prosperity. Now I've heard the other side comparing our budget with the governor's proposal. And reminds me of the words of Abraham Lincoln who said, what kills the skunk is the publicity it gives itself. Because the governor's proposal just didn't pass the smell test. Soaring tax increases, rewards to special interests. Nobody back home wanted that. And we couldn't even get a single vote in this chamber for that proposal. That's quite a feat. That's quite a feat. Yet he's still out advocating that. And I've heard it said today, oh, structural deficit, 1.2 billion, 1.6, whatever it is. Just remember, it was only five years ago that we came in here with a $4 billion deficit. Since then, five times we've brought forth a balance, no tax increase, on time, responsible budget after eight years of disorganized and dysfunctional budgets under the Rendell administration. Our budget respects the taxpayer. The governor's budget proposal insulted them. Our budget eliminates the $5 billion tax increase the governor proposed, and that was just the first year, $8 billion after that. Total of 12, 13 billion dollars of tax increases. No, my friends, we will not continue to press down this crown of thorns on the head of the taxpayers like this governor wants to do. The taxpayers are already weary from the heavy yoke of taxes. They're crying out for relief. Now, I've said it before on this floor, but the stories keep repeating themselves every time I go back home. It's the same. It hasn't changed. Little old ladies tugging my elbow in the grocery store and at the, at the bank and in the post office saying, Rick, I just can't make it. I can't, I can't pay my bills. I'm living on less than $1,000 a month, and yet i got to pay all my bills, and i got to pay these crazy taxes and all these spending programs. I can't make it. Don't raise my taxes. Story after story, people asking me, Please don't raise my taxes. And through their pain, we can see the injustice of it all. The, what's the governor's answer? Now make me bricks without straw. That's what the governor wants. He doesn't care what the taxpayers, whether they can afford it or not. Just do it. Give me the spending. Give me the money I need. That's his answer. But at the bottom of the heap is the taxpayer, struggling to make ends meet while paying for those who insist that they have a right to the working man's money. I, I tell you, my friends, beware of neglecting the taxpayer, lest your favor will dwindle perilously lower than it is now. Well, we've heard the call of the taxpayer. And have answered with a very responsible budget that provides the services we can afford without raising taxes. It's already been said, 100 million increase for basic education, 20 million increase for special ed, 25 million for pre-K counts, 127 million for intellectual disabilities, 8 million for our veterans' homes. It goes on and on and on. A million dollars for the food banks. The governor's proposal is built on sinking sand. Ours is built on the rock of fairness to those who bear the burden of paying it. We are governing, and I'm proud to support this budget, and I encourage all the members to join me in voting yes on House Bill 1192, and I ask the governor to sign it immediately and give the taxpayers the relief they need. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.